pero resulta ser que una cuñada mía se fue a Estados Unidos. Ella me decía que me fuera, que allá yo iba a ganar mil dólares semanal, que allá todo era fino. Resulta ser que me di cuenta que todo no era como me lo decían. Resulta ser que yo me llegó un recibo de luz y agua de 650 dólares mensual. Resulta ser que en gastos de comida y otras cositas más yo tenía que pagar mensual hasta más de 700 dólares en comida. Yo me desesperé y yo me afligí, caí en depresión. Me di cuenta que Estados Unidos no era el sueño americano que yo quería encontrar o que yo buscaba. Hello everyone, did you miss me? Because I sure missed you. Please, meet Liz, a Venezuelan migrant who eventually moved to Peru. She was enjoying it. As you can see, it was all fun and... Excuse me, it was all fun and games. She was having the time of her life. Up until a broke-ass, financially illiterate family member that was here in America told her she should come here all of her problems would be gone and she would be making a ton of money on a weekly basis well liz fell for it she came here and found out the hard way she claims that america is too hard you have to work too much and pay a lot of bills the cost of living is too expensive for her and well she regrets coming to america and that's when you guys made her depressed because well america it's too hard you should have done better with your country guys how dare you can you believe it depressed and tired of all of the hard work she had to do here again i'm tired of this nonsense i'm tired of feeling bad for these certified idiots Let's feel bad for the millions of Americans, and that includes immigrants too, that have been here forever, paying their dues, their taxes, working hard, and they're barely able to make it now, either on a monthly basis or weekly basis, to afford their meals and pay their bills. It's a true disgrace. But then here come these entitled morons and well they think they're gonna make a ton of money without even speaking english or having any valid skills and even if they did have those skills shut your mouth and continue to work hard you're new here you have nothing to complain about so you're depressed shut up and get back to work I'm telling you, I'm sick and tired of this nonsense. Oh, she's depressed. Oh, so sad. Oh, she's crying now. It's too hard here. Too much work. Can you believe it, guys? Oh, breaks my heart. Oh, that's so sad, you ignorant fool. Now you don't like America? Now it's horrible here? Well, get out. Get the hell out out we don't want you here never did anyway we want people that will work hard and not wind on stupid social media accounts when you are brand new here so get back to shaking your ass and maybe you'll learn something let's get started we're actually hold on guys please please do not take financial advice from a broke ass financially illiterate person let's have some common sense all right now let's get started
Okay, guys, so let's hear it from Liz herself, her experience and what she did about it. So here she says, I'm Venezuelan and I was living in Peru. I was not doing well over there. So I decided to come here to America with the hope that I will that I would find a better future. Since I ended up going to many countries before Peru, I went to Colombia and Ecuador, then Peru. But I had a sister-in-law that came to America and she would tell me to come here to America, that I would be making a thousand dollars a week, that everything was great, I would be able to pay all of my debts and I wanted my family to be better. Well, I got excited and desperate. I sold all of my things. I had my fridge in Peru, my things, everything. I sold everything and I even quit my job over there in Peru. So quit my job, but right before leaving Peru, I had a gut feeling that I shouldn't do it. But I decided to go. My sister-in-law would tell me that everything in, here in America was great. So, turns out, I sell everything and then have no money left because I went through the Darien Gap and that's where they I got robbed. They took my cell phone, they took all of my things, but I was able to exit the jungle. Once I exited the Darien Gap, I felt more calm than once I make it to America, I meet up with my sister-in-law and once I get here to America, I saw her face as if she didn't want to take me in anymore. Her face, her happy face was gone. So I was Within days, I felt like I was bothering her. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how America worked. So I started to look for work, but I couldn't find anything. I didn't have papers. Then I found a job and they, didn't, and, and they wanted to pay me $400 a week. I had to pay the room where I was living at since I didn't want to go to a shelter because I was scared of the shelter. Those people in the shelter did not make me feel safe. So wait a second. Here, yet another Venezuelan is telling us that the people living in those shelters are not good news. They're not the innocent victims of oppression that the Democrats keep telling us. So herself, she was struggling and did not go to a shelter because she was scared for her safety. Imagine that. So at least I give her props that she didn't go to a shelter. I give her some props for that. Let's continue. Then she says, I realized that everything was a lie. I received a water bill and an electricity bill of $650 every month. Then on food and other expenses, I was paying over $700 a month. I was desperate. I was depressed. I realized that America was not the American dream that I was looking for. I got away from my sister-in-law, from my family. I felt alone. I felt further away from the world because once I was in Colombia, Peru, I felt I was far away, but imagining America was worse. Well, I saw that everything was expensive here. I will go to a supermarket. Everything was like a dollar, two dollars. And at the end of the shopping, it was like 200 or 300 dollars. Well, after that, I 
was desperate. And I felt that I took the worst, coming to America was the worst decision I've ever made. So she regretted it and she says that Peru was better for her. I felt now that I was doing better in Peru than here from an economic standpoint, she's saying. So I would see the Facebook pages of my friends here in America and in, that includes my sister-in-law and I would see them, I would see them and I would see them with brand new shoes and brand new clothing. So she's saying that when she was in Peru, she would see them, her friends or, or family members here in America, that they would dress up nice and have nice shoes and whatever. And she thought, well, they're making a lot of money. But it was not the reality, she says. It was not the truth. Well, later on, she says, time went by and I found my sister-in-law again. We were by the we were by a park. People people were taking pictures, doing the, their TikToks, dancing and stuff. But it's all appearances, she says. Well, I ended up living in a really poor town in America. The house was made out of wood. It was it was not a comfortable house, she says. Not up to her standards. Well, after thinking, I said to myself and I decided to go back to Peru but I didn't know how to do it I had no money I was in debt even my soul was in debt everything everything to put it like this I even owed money that I didn't have I was so desperate I was depressed I wanted to talk to a family member to vent, but I couldn't do it. I was alone. Eventually, I communicated with, I was able to communicate with a Peruvian male, a Peruvian man, and I told him what I had gone through, that Peru it's not like America. Here in America, it's all about working and paying the bills and it's worse than being in another country. That the American dream is not real. And that's the end of that video. So guys, once again, I do not feel bad. First of all, I'm tired of feeling bad. I was already brainwashed for many years by the lamestream media and the Democratic Party that love this narrative, right? The identity politics. But this is ridiculous. I mean, she had plenty of time to shake her ass on her TikTok page or whatever. You're not going to tell me that she couldn't take just 15 to 30 minutes between breaks of shaking that ass and do some research about the economics of the country you're looking to move into. Do some research on the skills you have as a worker, whether you're washing cars or you are a clerk or whatever, and see how much you would make there. Find out the average rent and see if you can afford it. Subsequently, the food and bills that you would be spending a lot of your gains on. A basic internet research would have answered all of these questions for her and for millions of them that are here now going through a same type of scenario. Because I am telling you, this is not the first time I'm hearing a story like this. I am witnessing a lot of this, okay? And it's a true disgrace. Yes, we blame senile Biden and Kamala Harris, but they have to take some responsibility as well. Do some research, and by doing some reading and even watching some videos, you would be able to realize that 
making such a move is not the best thing. Especially when you do not have a solid and a legit asylum case. So, not feeling bad. I'm tired of it. And I'm sure you are too. Please follow me everywhere. And thank you so much for watching the video. Do not forget to smash the like button. Share this video with at least one person. Subscribe. And let me know what you think about this story in the comment section below. See you guys next time.